Hi there, so Halloween is coming up and with Halloween often come a lot of historically inspired costumes, including those based on the Victorian era and those that sort of pull their roots from the Victorian era, like costumes based on vampires. And I thought today that I would address some thoughts that I have on costuming for Victorians or Victorian inspired creatures or nasties for the Halloween season. Obviously, my opinion is no authority whatsoever, so take my words with a grain of salt, if so you choose. Um, we have three main points today, so first of all I'm going to talk about makeup, second about hair, and third about clothing. I am going to focus on women, because, or female expressing humans, because that is what I know best. I have no expertise whatsoever on the male side of this. Okay, so let's jump into it. First of all, talking about makeup. So obviously this depends heavily on your costume. If you're going for like a straight Victorian inspired costume, I would say obviously it's not actually the Victorian era, so you can do whatever you like. However, I would definitely recommend that you keep your makeup to a minimum with a focus on sort of keeping a more pale face um, and basically only really giving sort of an, maybe an obvious tint to your lips and your cheeks, otherwise trying to leave the face alone. Obviously you can do other things like mascara or putting on eyebrows, but I would say try to avoid a really heavy makeup look if you really want to create an accurate Victorian ideal. Obviously you can wear makeup, and even the Victorians did wear some makeup, um, contrary to many popular opinions. And then second, if we're talking about a Victorian inspired character like a vampire, obviously you can go crazy. But again, sort of the lips and the cheeks were the focus of the Victorian beauty, beauty ideal. Um, having very red lips and having quite rouged cheeks, it sort of emphasizes beauty and youth. Also, um, a pale face and like pale body, which obviously um, in the vampiric myth has to do with not being able to go outside in the sun. And and also in the Victorian ideal not having to go outside and work. This also uh, means like no spots on the face, so no freckles, which I have. Okay, moving on to hair. So hair I think is often one of the things that's greatly neglected in Victorian costumes. There's a lot of misconceptions about it. Um, but basically the hair of the Victorian era, which I'm defining loosely here as basically the 1840s through the 1890s, that's not perfect dating, but that's what we're talking about right here. Um, so the hair actually changed quite a bit in its style and sort of like aesthetic that we're going for, and it actually followed the line of the dress. Um, I'm creating an ongoing video series documenting like my ideals of the historical hair itself, but right now we're just going to talk about um, sort of a quick run through of what you might look at, shape-wise, sort of length-wise. If you have past shoulder length hair, you're probably going to be able to achieve something close to what the Victorian ladies wore in that time period. And then one more note about the hair, um, if you're going for an era, make sure your hair matches the era you're actually going for, because that will make your outfit look really cool, because it looks like you know what you're doing. Okay. So the 1840s through 1860s kind of had a similar aesthetic going the whole way through. Obviously there were definitely some changes, but the main attributes of an 1840s through 1860s hairstyle was a small bun on the back of the head, a middle part, not a side part, um, and sort of the hair focused low down. Um, pretty much the 40s through the 60s had the ears covered either with braids of hair or just like full loop things. Um, and it started coming off of the ears um, around the uh, 1860s or the Civil War period in American thinking. Um, so that's sort of the basics of the hairstyles then. Obviously you can search the internet and find many more accurate tutorials, especially for the Civil War period if you're going for that, but that's sort of just the basics. In the 1870s, things got real interesting. So um, basically hairstyling kind of went nuts. It went up, it went out, it was kind of like everywhere. This is often what is, is the misconceptualization of sort of a Victorian hairstyle with all these like weird rolls and a lot going on through the entire back of the head, a lot of hair pieces, braids everywhere, and flowers. Obviously that was more of an evening dress look, but it definitely was a very 1870s look. Um, respective of the time period. This can be an extremely beautiful aesthetic, especially if you're like going for a vampire or something, or like the crazy evening attire. Um, this was the era of the half crinoline, half bustle, and it was kind of just a time of insanity and excess. Moving into the 1880s, uh, the hair changed 
they wear hair, especially change, to become a lot smaller, a lot more discreet, less crazy than the 1870s. Um, usually it was worn pretty high up on the head, again, keeping the middle part through, the, through all these decades. Um, middle part, high up on the head. Um, I made a tutorial for that. I've also made an 1870s hair tutorial if you're interested in that one. Day wear for the 1880s was extremely simple, like seriously, put your hair in a high bun, you're good to go. Finally, the 1890s is getting into what we consider the Belle Epoque, or the beautiful era, so um, more of a loose aesthetic was looked at. Um, also, the, the ideal of the female was changing in this time period all the way up through the Edwardian era, so there's actually an ideological change that the fashion follows. The 1890s was a weird period of transitional hairstyles. We don't quite see the crazy Edwardian fluff and uh, curls and just mass of insanity and largeness underneath these huge hats. Um, the 1890s was kind of an in-between between the 1880s and the, eight and the 1900s, which is a dumb thing to say because, duh, obviously. But basically what we see here is sort of a high bun that sort of sticks out from the head and a lot of like fluffiness created by curling irons. Obviously this is a really ha hard hairstyle to pull off and if you want to go for something sort of just like a bun with the middle part, that is perfectly acceptable. Um, the 1890s is very, very difficult to pull off, especially with the whole rest of the dress aesthetic going on. That's what I have to say about the hair. Okay, finally our third subject, which is clothing. Now, obviously, Victorian clothing was very varied. Um, it wasn't just hoop skirts and corsets. There, were, there was actually a lot of change from the 1840s up through the uh, 1880s and even the 1900s. Um, the basic layers of the dress obviously remain the same. Because it's Halloween, you're not going to have the budget or the time or the resources to make a perfectly accurate Victorian ensemble, and by no means do you need to do that. However, do like actually know what you're going for. So again, um, if you're trying to put together sort of a cohesive decade of clothing, that can look really good, partially because it's not just a jumble of different decades of Victoriana sort of mashed together into our modern ideology of it. It looks more historically accurate because it is more of an ensemble somebody would have worn in a specific time period. Um, so I'm just going to run through quickly like sort of the shape of the clothing and some of the underclothes that we mislabel often. So beginning with the 1840s, we have sort of a dome-shaped skirt and a cinched-in waist look, um, kind of pulling off of the Romantic era, so not quite so extreme, but still sort of like these cropped little skirts, um, crop meaning like off the angles, and then um, just sort of a very simple top blouse sort of look. This would have been worn with quilted petticoats underneath, but obviously a hoop skirt works, crinoline. You want to call it that, um, works underneath as well. Um, uh, the 1850s and the 1860s basically were just an extremification of uh, the crinoline, so sort of those huge hoop skirts you usually see portrayed in the American Civil War, yeah, those, those um, so that was a thing for a while, um, and sort of the same dress aesthetic, getting steadily more fancy and decorated up through the 1860s. Now the 1870s saw a big shift in uh, dress which isn't immediately apparent. In the 1870s, basically, crinolines uh, started getting sort of more elliptical and like pushed towards the back, um, creating sort of the half crinoline, which creates some pretty really wacky shapes, but basically it's a focus on like the volume of the dress moving towards the back. And by consequence, by the time we get to the late 1870s and the early 1880s, we have the bustle, which is our next sort of big development in ladies floof. Um, so the bustle was like literally just from the back, it went out and so it sort of created a, a shape like this off of the back, sort of a weird like lobster tail. And that was a different, it's completely independent piece of clothing, it's not a crinoline, it looks different, it acts different, yeah. Um, but it was another piece of foundational wear. So that was like the next big development. And then after the 1880s kind of um, dress shape wear kind of decreased in necessity it sort of fell out of fashion so by the 1890s really there wasn't any like big caged things worn underneath ladies clothing and it was mainly a bum pad and that was about it and that continued actually into the edwardian period and other underwear obviously is the famous corset um, there are many more very educated people 
much more educated than I am uh, who can tell you many more things about horses. But that was another thing that women wore. They didn't die. Yeah. These are my thoughts on dressing as a Victorian or a Victorian inspired character this Halloween. So basically your main takeaways are wear whatever makeup you want and also your costume if you want it to look really coherent and historically accurate go for sort of a decade and settle with that. If your hairstyle matches your outfit you will look very cool and very accurate. And those were the main points. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye!